How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood med student, and today we're going to be covering this new study that's been released in the last couple of weeks on the relationship between chemical hair straightening agents, also known as relaxers, with its association with uterine cancer and kind of the implications of what this study means and how does it impact the lives of people who actually use these chemical relaxers and a bit of the social determinants of health behind that. But before I actually delve into the results of the study, I always like to emphasize that my biases whenever I cover a specific topic and for this one is that I am a clinician mostly and uh, secondary I'm a researcher I'm not a primary researcher I have published in research I have given research presentations but almost all of that is um, what I call um, lowercase r research it's not big data research so I do a pretty good job of interpreting data when it comes to res uh, research publications, but I am not an expert in taking all that data and creating a concise uh, analysis of that. So uh, if there is something that I am missing, if there's something that I don't uh, address that should be addressed in this video, please feel free if you are research oriented, a research oriented person, feels, please feel free to comment down in the comments and I'll heart your uh, comment uh, to make sure that people know that whatever you're saying is accurate and we're not looking at um, people who tend to comment on my videos to spread misinformation. First off, I want to start off with a little bit of information on the background of this study and how they came to creating this study and coming up with the results. So this study was um, actually an offshoot of the, uh, a study that's sponsored by the National Institute of Health, the NIH, called uh, the Sister Study. It enrolled about 33,000 uh, women identifying individuals and followed them for a span of about 11 years. And uh, through those 11 years, they uh, documented the medical visits that these patients had, documented um, a bunch of different products they used, documented a bunch of chemicals they were exposed to, basically followed the lives of these women for over a decade and tried to create a, a really good record of medical illnesses that these women developed over time and the sister study specifically looked at breast cancer it was a breast mostly breast cancer related research but they took so much data like anything that could be linked to uh, future health problems they took that data and uh, luckily uh, one of that was uh, monitoring uterine cancer among these women and the use of chemical relaxers. So what were the results after they followed these women for more than a decade? Well, they saw that about 378 women were diagnosed with uterine cancer at near the end of when they stopped their analysis and among those uh, that were diagnosed with uterine cancer, uh, the women that used uh, hair straighteners, the, these chemical hair straighteners, uh, for more than four times a year uh, had the highest risk, more than twice as much risk of developing uterine cancer than those who did not. And I want to show you this uh, chart that I found in this study that was published that really shows you a graphical representation of how much risk you have when you um, use more uh, chemical reactor uh, chemical relaxers throughout the year so looking at this chart you see some of the stark differences between those who never ever use any form of chemical hair straightener versus people that do so um, this study uses something called a hazard ratio it's used a lot in cancer research to measure risk between a, a population that's exposed to something versus a population that's not exposed to something it's just used as a comparison so usually the ones that's not exposed to something they have the hazard ratio of one and every number greater than the hazard ratio of one means it's an increased risk so you saw uh, so you see if like if someone ever uses a, a chemical relaxer even if it's just once or maybe every now and then their risk still increases in the results of this study and as you get to using chemical reactors relaxers for more than four times a year that's a 2.55 increase from 1.0 that's double more than double risk of developing uterine cancer. It is a very, very alarming number. And of course, some people are going to say, well, what about the value before that? Uh, less than or equal to four times. Um, there is some limitations of the study, like I mentioned before, is that because of how they gathered this data and because it was such large data sets, they weren't able to get as much comprehensive information. But when it has the value of more than four times, there are subsets of people that may use it 
four times a year, subsets of people that may use them seven times a year, subsets of people that use it more than 10 times a year. So those numbers are not being allocated into uh, their own individual graphs. They're just being lumped into more than four times a year. And that's when it gets concerning because any person that's using it for more than four times a year is showing an increased risk compared to people who don't use it more than four times a year. And now you might be thinking, wow, those are really, really scary uh, risk numbers, Ben. And yeah, it is. And when we delve more deeper into who is being affected by uterine cancer by using chemical relaxers, we see that mostly it's black and brown women. Around 60% of the women who reported using the hair straightening products were black identifying individuals. So they, 60% all of the people that reported using any form of chemical react, relaxer that was included in the study identified as black. Now. When it comes to uh, other forms of uh, chemical hair products like bleach, hair dyes, um, perms, and those other types of pro products, the researchers didn't find associations with uterine cancer, but I'm going to put a big asterisk. These chemical products have been linked to other forms of cancer and other forms of illnesses over time. So I highly recommend that you look into that, but it's beyond the scope of this video. When my friends who are not in the medical field found out about this, they were asking me, why did it take them this long to even study uterine cancer risk when it comes to chemical relaxers? And part of it has to do with social determinants of health and how we don't have enough funding on looking at how the intersections of being a marginalized group um, can affect your health over time. And in addition to that, studies have shown that chemical relaxers have significant impact on your health beyond just increasing your risk for uterine cancer. Um, in addition to that, other studies in the past have showed that it might increase your, uh, you, it might lower your sex steroid hormones. It might elevate the risk of developing fibroids, which causes painful bleeding in between your menses, your menstrual periods. Use of uh, chemical relaxers have also been shown to cause early menstrual periods among children and uh, breast cancer and ovarian cancer. So there's a lot of things these chemical re relaxers have an association to. Looking at all of this data from a clinician, a clinician lens who also looks at how some of this affects our patients who are often mistreated by the medical system is that most people that use relax chemical hair straightening products are black and brown individuals who are trying to meet some form of American standard of professionalism to fit into this really this really ignorant idea of what it means to be professional in the workplace. And if you are not able to straighten your hair, you're going to get dinged by your workplace professionals. I am that I am very, very much a critic of uh, Western professionalism in the workplace. Uh, you can see my video on that. I think it's an extension of racism and how it keeps people who are black and brown from getting jobs. But uh, it's one of those reasons why people are pressured to use chemical re relaxers to straighten their hair to fit this Western stand of, standard of professionalism and beauty. Uh, in addition to that, as a clinician, what I'm most worried about is the fact that if there is such an elevated increased risk among black and brown women who use chemical relaxers from for more than four times a year we don't actually have a screening test for uterine cancer the thing is that we have screening tests for breast cancer like the mammogram we have screening tests for cervical cancer like your pap smears and your hpv uh, dna testing but we don't have any early preventative test to detect uterine cancer before it develops into uterine cancer. So most people who are diagnosed with uterine cancer are diagnosed after they start exhibiting symptoms, which means they're later on in the stage. It's not on the benign phase, it is cancer and it must be treated. I don't know, all of that is so alarming to me and it makes me so mad for how often chemicals are promoted uh, to certain groups to push a narrative that ends up harming them in the long run. Another thing I really want to emphasize in this, um, in this study that I feel like a lot of these news articles are not covering is that they also looked at 
physical activity and if it's a protective factor they looked at not just physical activity but they also looked at bmi which is um stereotypically associated with weight but they looked at those two factors and they tried to see if it increased or decreased the risk along with using hair uh, relax, um, relaxers with its association with uterine cancer and surprisingly the results were very very interesting if you see this chart there is no association between bmi a person's weight to uh whether or not they're more likely to develop uterine cancer which I think is great because so, so often there is a bias that someone's increased weight can lead to this, this, and that issue. But here we don't see that. But something that I did see that I saw was very, very cool was, and interesting is that there was a stronger association with um, uh, hair straightener use and low physical activity to uterine cancer. So people who were using these chemical relax relaxers and not going out and exercising had a much higher risk. It can be explained by the uh, chronic inflammation theory, which that uh, when someone uh, exercises, it actually lowers the inflammatory state that most of us are in when we are in a low physical activity state. And cancer is a pro-inflammatory state. So if you're exercising, it constantly keeps you in a low inflammatory state, which is super cool. I think this is also another avenue that we should uh, check out in future studies. One thing I really want to do near the end of this video is to amplify the voices of black and brown women who are affected by the results of the study and get their thoughts on how they are feeling and because i am a brown man i don't know about the lived experiences i don't use chemical relaxers and i want to amplify their voices so here are some things that i've seen some uh, black and brown people who have used chemical re relaxers say about the results of the study starting off dr uche blackstock writes a new study out yesterday is the first to suggest an association between uterine cancer and chemical hair straighteners using hair straighteners doubled the risk of developing uterine cancer by the age of 70. Although the increased risk was seen among women of all racial and ethnic backgrounds, black women may be more at risk since they were disproportionately more likely to use hair straighteners. Although I've worn my hair natural for most of my life, many black women know very well the societal pressure to straighten and chemically alter our hair. We are bombarded with Eurocentric standards of beauty. We are told our own afro-textured hair is unprofessional and unkempt. We are even discriminated against because of our hair, hence the reason for the Crown Act in California. But this study is particularly upsetting because we might be actually risking our lives to look socially acceptable or to keep our jobs. Diane Morales says, Getting a relaxer for those with pelo malo was a rite of passage in my house. I got my first one before sixth grade and was 31 years old before I rejected that ritual and embraced my natural hair. Besides the toxicity of Latino anti-blackness, now there's this. And lastly, Dr. Crystal Rogers says, Up in the middle of the night, thinking about this again, did you know that there are no screening methods for uterine cancer? So early, asymptomatic discovery is unlikely. How many black women have died or will because society tells us that our natural hair is unacceptable? I want to end this video by saying that the results of the study is very, very alarming, but I hope that some good will come from this study even though many people will be affected and now that we know many people have been affected by the use of chemical relaxers but i hope this is encouragement to everyone who know who use relaxers or who know people who use relaxers to engage in discussion and engage in um, where do we go from here? What other studies should we do? How we prevent uterine cancer? And we should create a screening method for detecting uterine cancer, also ovarian cancer, side note. But there, I don't want it to be like a doom and gloom situation. I think with studies like this that are very alarming, we can make positive impact happen and we have to work together. We have to listen to the voices of black and brown people who are affected by this and uh, follow their lead. And I hope that uh, we as a society continue to make improvements in healthcare as we find more and more about things that harm us. Anyways, I hope this video was informational. I hope you learned something this, from this video. I hope um, you'll share this information with someone who may benefit from it. And uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. This is Ben.